Yo, what up? Welcome back to another video. It's Sunday right now. Yesterday I tried to fish with Alex. Uh, we did have intentions to go off and do a, an overnight trip, then it got reduced back to a backcountry trip, and then weather further reduced that to just driving around for like five hours. We didn't even fish or whatever. The, the weather turned bad, we drove towards rain, or we had some backup options, but there was people there. Yeah, so it was a complete disaster. So it's, yeah, like I say, it's Sunday now. I'm gonna try, I'm on a local river again. Uh, very local again. Big fish in here though, it's a cool river. I'm gonna try and catch fish, and then I also thought I would do this one slightly differently because a lot of you guys have been asking about the gear and the different things that I use, bits and pieces, and because all my gear is completely, I don't even know where to start. So this one will be a little bit different, will be a little bit of fishing, hopefully I can catch fish, and then some a gear. Uh, I'm just gonna show you what I use. So first things first, I'll show you the waders that I wear. So these are Sims waders. Very popular brand, I mean, you can't even see that, can you? These ones are, I don't even know what brand, uh, what model these are. I think they're Freestone. Let me know in the comment section, some of you guys might know what they are. Um, I've tried a lot of different waders. I was using Patagonia waders before these ones. I've tried like Sierra, I think I've had some Reddington ones. I've had Riverworks ones. Definitely Patagonia and Sims. This model here, Sims and this model specifically, which is one of the cheaper ones, uh, is the ones I've found to be probably the most comfortable to wear and also last me the longest. Like I go through waders like crazy. Uh, I probably do at least two pairs a year. These ones seem to be the bee's knees for me. So I've just, this is probably the, the, the style or the type of waiter that I've, I've um, worn the most. Yeah. And I always roll them down most of the time. The boots I'm wearing, uh, I haven't had these ones for too long, but so far they are going really, really well. Uh, Orvis, I think they're called just pros or something like that. So I don't have studs in these. Normally I've got studs in them, but they are super grippy so far. And they, that's what they claim them, like made in conjunction with um, Michelin, I think it is. So the tire company, I don't know. They seem to be pretty grippy so far. I probably will end up with studs in them, but we'll see what happens. The boots I had before this were another Orvis model. I'll try and put a little shot of them in now so you know what they are, but I can't remember the model name, but they were really, really good. In fact, they did me a whole season. It's the first boot I've had in ages that has lasted me a whole season. Before those, I was running Patagonia, either foot tractors or ultralights, and I destroyed them in months. They just fell apart pretty much. Um, the last all the boots I had, really, really good, and these ones appear to be pretty good so far. Now the rod that I'm using today, and the rod that I have been using like more than anything else recently, is the Loop Q rod. So yeah, this is the Loop Q rod. It's by far one of the one of Loop's cheapest rods. Like a lot of their rods are like thousand dollars plus Kiwi. I don't know what that is in the US, probably like 800, 900, 700, something like that. But they're, really, they're quite expensive rods, but this is, like I say, one of the, by far one of the cheaper ones. And it's also my favorite at the moment. It's really, really, it's a really good rod. It's, I've been fishing it in a six way. I've been fishing it for like three, three months or so. And I just love it. Probably because it's affordable and it's like, I don't know what it is about it, but it's just like I'll pick it up well before I pick up if the SX or anything like that that is more than twice the price. Uh, I just love this thing, it's good. And then recently I also got the Luke Q rod, which is another really by far one of their cheap, like compared to a thousand dollar reel. I think these are only a couple hundred bucks Kiwi as well. This is pretty much what I've been running in like the last three, four videos. This is all I've been fishing. Oh, that's the other thing I'll show you while you're here. It's so freaking bright. Where can I stand? It's not so freaking bright. Yeah, so, ton of you, ton of people have been asking about this net, which this is a McLean's, McLean's or McLean's? I can't remember how to spell it, but I'll try to remember to leave a link in the description. But it's a, it's a way net, so it's got a big plastic bag, which is good for the fish, and then it's inside the handle here, which I will try and demonstrate is a so that's a 
a way net as well. I don't know if you can buy them anywhere else in the world. Now that's the McLean's net. I'll try and leave it linked below. They've had a lot of issues with them. In fact, this is, I shouldn't really promote them because I had like three of these nets fall apart. This little bolt here that connects the hoop to the handle, that falls out from factory and then you lose the big hoopy thing and all you're left with is the handle or vice versa depending on how you've got it connected to yourself if you've got it connected at all so it was a huge issue like i lost heaps of them but the difference on this one so far is it's got this little it's just some kiwi ingenuity that's an electrical spade connection and a little bit of elastic crimped into it and i think that alloy in there is enough to keep that bolt from you know working its way loose it's not even a nylock nut or anything it's just a stainless bolt i can see the end of the bolt's just been cut off with a with, with a tool so there's nothing special but so far this one is holding itself together but i lost so many of them and like for it's an expensive net i think this one's like 160 dollars uh you shouldn't have things just falling apart on them all the time but anyway so far this one seems to be going really good so hopefully that's the last one of those that i have to buy if it if it if this does fall apart you guys will certainly know about it cool so rods together i need the net i don't need my other rod tube I can stay there i need this thing that's all i'm going to go through now for the moment i'm going to put the rest of this stuff on my backpack and uh go see if we can catch a fish got him Definitely a brown. He's definitely eaten. No, what are you say? Ah, see nothing. Got him. Oh, f oh, I had him. I had him. I had him. I watched his mouth go. God, oh, that is annoying. Is he back there? Is that him? No, that's the different one, that's the smaller one. So I moved on the big one and the smaller one has come straight back to claim his spot. Got him. Oh, oh it's two of them. Stay there, don't go away. He's just drifting back. Oh, that's, oh, he ate it. No, he didn't. Oh, he definitely, he definitely looked at it. I'm sure he ate that. I reckon he might have eaten that and I've missed it. Yeah, there he is. Eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, you oh, fuck. I'm sure he ate that. Did I just set the hook before he actually ate it? Is that what just happened? Oh my god, he's eating it. I'm sure. I gotta check there's a hook on here. What the hell is going on? I'm sure he's eating that. Dude, you gotta get it in your mouth. You gotta actually like open your mouth and let it go in there. He's so looking at it hard, he just not committing to no 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 come back come back oh he was trying to eat it so bad oh I had him he ate it he ate it and I fucked it right, I caught this little rainbow I'm reduced to uh just running the GoPro when I've caught something because I got like two percent yeah there you go rainbow I did catch something Yo, what's, what is, what is good? The GoPro footage you just saw was filmed on Sunday. It's now Tuesday, I've just been out, tried to catch a fish again. Couldn't do it. I think I foul hooked a brown trout. So I'm coming to have a look now. Oh yes, and I got him. One cast, oh my God, one cast, one cast. And he's off. So that was cool. I think that was foul hooked to be honest. I want to make videos out of you know, not necessarily just catching fish time after time. It gets a little bit repetitive. 
don't know about you guys, but I feel like it must get repetitive. So I wanted to, I wanted to do something different. So I'm gonna show you the gear that is in my bag. The start of the video, I showed you some of it, and now I'm gonna show you what's in this thing. I mean, this all seems fairly unexciting to me, but maybe you guys are interested. I know some of you definitely are because you've asked for it. But so attached to a little thing, forceps. They normally live in this little side. The obvious thing would be the fly box, which uh, is a mess at the moment. There's just crap everywhere. Let me sort this out just for a second. I've got eggs and streamers everywhere. This is a CNF fly box. So you nymphs on this side, I normally go lightest to heaviest. And then I've got eggs here, streamers here, and then various sort of dry flies things. But yeah, these little panels open up and they're just little boxes in there. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, CNF. CNF design, I don't know the model of it, but I'm sure if you look on their website or look in your fly shop, I'm sure I'm sure they'll have it. It's a pretty popular one. So yeah. So fly box. Okay, so also I have three different kinds of like indicator stuff. I've got way too much of this. I shouldn't have three, but I do, whatever. That's like the proper New Zealand strike indicator tool stuff. So is that, three different colors of it. And then the, and there I've got the regular old sheep's wool and a little bit of the other colour. And then there's some miniature tubing and somewhere in here as well I should have. There's the two different tubing sizes for the uh, New Zealand Strike indica Tool Indicator thing. I got the, the, uh, the uh, thick and the thin. I use a lot of the thin, I don't use so much of the thick anymore, but yeah. Three bags of that, which I say is too much. I don't need that much, but that's what I have. Split shot. I don't use a lot of it, but it's always very handy to have. Uh, especially the really, really small sizes. Sometimes if you're fishing one of those soft tackles or a really light fly, instead of changing the whole rig, you can just tie it, you know, put a tiny bit of split shot on. Changes everything. A muesli bar that's probably filled with water or something. And then that's honestly pretty much it. <laughs> I told you it was unexciting. Sometimes there's a GoPro in there as well, but otherwise, that is that thing. The backpack I have is, this is just one I have. I need to buy a new one. This isn't the best backpack in the world, but it's, super, it's you know, it's it's uh, fit for purpose at the moment, but I do need a new one. This one's leaking a little bit and doing some other things. So it's a loop, roll top, waterproof backpack that's not so much waterproof anymore, but it's doing the job. It's how I hold my tippet just goes on the strap tip it, floatant nippers is all there and it just hangs off a carabiner off the off your shoulder strap. On the other side here I've got, what the hell is this thing called? Magnet IQ. This is some dude on Instagram reached out, wanted to send me one, sent me it and I actually love it. I use it all the time so it's it's a really really strong magnet that just uh, hangs off a carabiner on the other side of my shoulder strap stick flies on it and things but I, I use it all the time I actually love it I would miss it greatly if it wasn't on my backpack now this is probably why the backpack leaks I cut a hole in it <laughs> I cut a hole in my waterproof backpack so I could have my uh, my camel camelback you know drinking straw through there that sits on that strap as well the the main contents of this bag is always camera gear so the f I carry like three four cameras something like that oh frick where's my lens cap yeah, so this is the Panasonic GH4. This is the camera I use for all the, you know, B-roll, super slow-mo shots and things like that. It takes a really nice picture as well. But yeah, so this is that camera. It sits in here, goes in that big backpack. The next camera that I use, well, it's not really a camera. It's a drone. It's the older DJI Mavic Pro. I know there's a 2 Mavic Pro 2 zoom and a Pro 2, uh, whatever. There's a new one anyway which I probably will get soon, but this one does the trick for now. So I got like three batteries, controller, and the actual drone going that, which also live in the backpack. And then this camera that I'm filming with as well, normally that sits right on top. I always have a headlamp floating around in there. I got this dry bag that sits right in the bottom. That's got a spare change, like a base layer, like thermal top, thermal pants. Uh, it's got stuff to light a fire and an EPIRB that and socks. That's always, this just lives in that backpack 100% of the time. 
I'm not really set up. Everything's a bit of a mess at the moment, which is um, I've got to sort it out. But I'm actually I've got to repack in a, I've got to repack everything into a bigger bag because I'm doing an overnight trip, not tomorrow, but the next day. So I've got to pack everything tomorrow. I've got to get this finished. This video finished now. I've got to pack everything tomorrow, and then I plan on filming three videos on this overnight trip. So. Uh, keep an eye out for those if you like this video be sure to click the like button subscribe if you haven't already ring the little bell so you get notified every time I post a new video and uh, leave me a comment of what you'd like to see in the future thank you guys all so much for watching catch you in the next one peace